What do so, you got to say? Okay. How do we meet? Here comes the cheese. <laughs> Today I am going to go room by room and clean. It won't be perfect. It's not a spring clean. That's, I'm planning that will probably take me till next spring, <laughs> but this is actually going to have to get dealt with today, plus a little bit more. And I want to, we're going on a trip. I want to make sure coming home from the trip that my house is as clean as I could get it before I leave. So I'm going to take a couple of hours and try to hit every room and do the basic wipe down and vacuuming. And we'll see what else needs to be picked up or put away. And yeah, so. Come on along with me, get your cleaning motivation on, or just relax watching someone else work besides you. That's something I definitely like to do. If I'm too tired to work, I like watching other people work. <laughs> if you're new here, my name is Karen. Welcome to my home. Oh, one more thing. While I'm cleaning, we're going to be answering more of your questions. If you have a question for us, put a cue in front of it in the comment section so that I will see it and I'll answer it in another video. Today, you're going to get to see my husband as well, and he's going to answer some questions that people had for him. Okay. You don't have to fold laundry if you don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm folding laundry, though, because we're leaving soon. Okay. Yeah. Huh? It's... It seems like I should. Yeah. <laughs> this is called a laundry chat. Okay. That's what the cool kids do. All right. <laughs> so see you lady asked for our personal testimonies of faith, right? And also for our love story. <laughs> okay. So you go ahead with your personal testimony. Yeah. <sighs> um, so my personal testimony, I grew up in a family where we did go to church. My mother and father uh, moved around a lot because my dad was in the Navy uh, at, the time, at the time we were in Hawaii my dad was stationed there we were going to um, church in Aiea and um, I heard the gospel there was a uh, clear understanding that I needed a savior that I was a sinner um, and I was young, so at the time I was six, six and a half years old. Um, so I wanted to respond and become a Christian. And my sister said, no, you need to sit down. <laughs> You're too young. So as most children do, I was quite upset. And um, so I went to my parents and said, hey, I wanted to uh, respond to that. And... and um, my mother and father said, okay, well, they do that from time to time, so when they do it again, you can respond. So the following week, I went ahead and um, accepted Christ by responding to what they said, believing. And again, remember, I was pretty young, so I basically just understood that I had a need, and I believed it, and that's where it started for me. Um, the next 10 years, I grew up pretty normal. We traveled, we moved, I was involved in sports and all those kinds of things. I got to be about 15 years old and we I'd still been going to church and that type of thing. And I really, um, you know, I hadn't, hadn't spent much time really thinking a whole lot about being a Christian or what it really meant. But at that point when I was 15, it came back to me, the understanding of I needed a savior. And my mother had mailed something to me at the time. I was away at a camp, and she mailed something to me that said, if your Christianity is worth possessing, isn't it worth professing? And that made a really big impact on me, that it, I had to look at my relationship with God through Jesus Christ and say, well, what's the value? What value have I placed on that in my life? And if it's a big value, and I do believe it's big because he gives and promises to me eternal life through Jesus Christ. It's a big thing, and that I need to understand that it, that's the highest value. So I should be not just um, you know believing in it, but also sharing that with other people who can also have the opportunity to know God and to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. So I made some pretty big changes at that point in my life. Um, I decided I was going to go to a uh, religious institution or a Bible college. 
and I applied a bunch of different places and I really couldn't afford much because around that time my sister had Hodgkin's lymphoma and she passed away from that. And so my parents didn't have a lot of money to send me to school, so I had to find a place where I could afford to pay as I go. And that's what brought me to Maine. I have uh, family here. My father's family is from here. I had the wonderful blessing of living with my grandparents while I went to college. And I worked at a grocery store and in construction, a radio station. I worked for a newspaper. All those things to pay my way through college. And art framing. Too. And that is where I met my wife. Yes. So that's a part of our love story. I met her while I was in college. And uh, again, another huge event that changed the course of my life. So I'm very blessed for, um, you know, those big moments in my life where, um, you know, God slowed me down long enough to think about what was really important and also who I would spend my life with. Yeah. What so, do you got to say? Okay. How do we meet? Here comes the cheese. <laughs> Here comes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is just my way of getting him to fold laundry. <laughs> Not a big deal. Yeah. So, anyway, I grew up in a home where we also went to church. And uh, when I was like five years old or so, my mother was teaching Sunday school. Actually, I must have been old. Well, maybe I, I don't know how old I was. I was young anyway, and I was too shy to not sit with her. So I would sit with her. And then when she wasn't teaching anymore, they would drop us off at Sunday school. But my dad was like playing in country and bluegrass bands. And he would get home late Saturday night. So they were not attending church right then. So they would drop us at Sunday school. And I can remember that they would have to call my parents back because I would get upset and be crying and I didn't want to stay so finally when I was 11 my dad uh, and my mom both renewed their faith in Jesus and started attending church um, and we had changed churches and I had the pastor's wife as a Sunday school teacher in the sixth grade and she was saying that if you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, that you should pray and ask him to be your savior and give your life over to him. And she was actually telling this to someone else in the class and saying, oh, I know, you know, Karen has done that. And I was like, no, I haven't. I didn't say it out loud. I was just kind of embarrassed. So I went home and I went up. I'm 11 years old. And I went up in my parents' bedroom, which is kind of strange because it's not like I would go in their room much. They weren't in there. But I think I, because I shared a bedroom, maybe I thought, well, I know my parents. They don't hang out in their bedroom. They're not going to be up here. So it was a place to be alone. And I got on my knees and I prayed and asked Jesus to be my Savior, to take over my life and to forgive me for my sins. And then um, growing up, church, youth group, uh, singing in choir, and um, also at certain points, my dad and I, because he had stopped singing in bands, once he really got serious about his faith, that kind of dwindled. And he was more focused on serving in the church. And um, so sometimes I would sing with him and we would do concerts and we would go from church to church. Um, and I would sing harmony for him and, you know, do some solo stuff and give testimonies. But once I hit like 19, because I had decided not to go to college and I was very lonely, I started drifting away from my faith and getting into, you know, getting into trouble and hanging out with the wrong crowd. And then when I was 21, my crowd started um, putting their faith in Jesus. And so I remember, <laughs> I it's the truth. I remember laying in my bed and can't make this stuff can't up, make folks. This stuff up. So I remember laying in my bed thinking, man, you know, a bad day with Jesus was better than a good day of what I'm living now because I had moved out of the house. And I knew that if I wanted my faith to work, it needed, for me, it needed to be 110%. So I thought, what's the most 110% thing I could do? 
So I thought, go to Bible college. There's 110%. And by, yeah, 21. By now I'm 21. So I went home and I asked my parents if I could move home from the rooming house. And I started going to Bible college. And my very first day, I met him. But I do want to share this one story. Because when I was doing the photo album, Declutter, I pointed to somebody in Florida. And I said she was life-changing. Because she used to talk to me about, you know, finding a husband and... So that was years, like a couple, two or three years before um, you went to school. when I went to school. And so when we thought about the timing, because it was easy to, to know what timing, because it was specifically when I went to Florida to visit her, she was like, God knows who your husband is. So you need to be praying for him. And I began committing to pray for him, knowing that only God knew who he was. That was the year he went to CEF camp to serve as a CEF missionary. That was the year his mother sent him the postcard that if Christ was worth possessing, he was worth professing. And that was when he really got serious about his faith. So that is the cool part to me of our story together. So we met at Bible college. He, was two, he is two and a half years younger than me. Uh, we, he lived in one town and I was in the very next town. We had people, mutual people that we knew and we started commuting together, became friends. <clears throat> um, we, a, we were attending a young adult group together, yeah. a couple of different groups, right. not just one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we become friends. We had mutual friends cause we were in the same college and career group. He was more like my buddy, you know, uh, I would cry on his shoulder about boys or whatever, and he would tell me about girl, you know, whoever in his she life. He was not impressed by me. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, we had our moments. Yeah, so yeah. then he went away for the summer to home to where his parents were, and I remember like, oh my goodness, I miss him. So that kind of started things going. So three and a half years later, after we met, you know, we were friends, dear friends for three and a half years, and then we got married. Right. So I met you in my the beginning of my sophomore year, and then we were engaged to be married the end of my senior year. Yeah. So sophomore, yours. junior, senior. Yeah. Those are my <laughs> the filthy glasses. Yeah. Anyway, my, sophomore. Yeah. Sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> that was just shocking. No, I think, and you know. I, a part of what we're sharing is that for um, just about everyone who becomes a Christian, it starts by believing that God sent his son for you and that Christ died on a cross for us and that he's alive and he's someone you can have a relationship with day to day. Beyond that, I would also say that going to school and so many other things, it just led to more and more things that would strengthen my faith. Um, you know, in school, I had to study Greek and Hebrew. I got into, you know, studying manuscripts, archaeology, all kinds of things that didn't damage my faith, but supported it in, in the understanding that, look, there's lots of objective things that show that the Lord Jesus walked on the earth, that he had disciples. They lived till their dying breath, believing that he rose from the dead and that he was sent by the Father in heaven. Um, you know, those are eyewitness testimonies, and each of us is confronted by that. When someone gives an eyewitness testimony, do I believe what they're saying? And that's really what uh, the New Testament is. It's the eyewitness testimonies of those who knew Jesus the closest. And, um, you know, that, that helped us more and more to just keep um, not just walking by faith and believing what we did as young people, but helped us, um, you know, to, to strengthen and solidify those that, you know, our beliefs are not lunacy or crazy, but they're founded in history and objective evidence from eyewitnesses. Um, so it's, it's an interesting journey that we've made. We've made it together, and uh, we're happy. So. so somebody else asked, it might have been Sparrow Stockwell, but she also wants to know about our love story, but someone had also asked, are our we, love story. <laughs> it's a love story, <laughs> um, had wanted to know, are we moving? Oh, yeah. yeah. Are we moving? I don't know. I mean, I know. we tried a couple of years yeah, ago. we tried. 
and he gave it the <laughs> gave through. it the good didn't go through try and it didn't go well um you know I, I think this is true of what we've been talking about though with our faith is when it comes to the decisions of life that we make and this is a big one we don't just want to move we want god's blessing in what we do and to know that we're doing yep. is 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 not just right for us but for the whole family and we just you know we didn't see a way through from the last time i think when the timing is right uh, then that we're, will happen yeah we're definitely willing to move yeah and it's not like we're not thinking about it right right we don't want it's to scale just, up right that's what's hard. We don't want to scale up. It's not a time in your life when you want to scale up. Yeah, I'm not really interested in more. I've been more very debt. blessed. Oof. More debt or even more, just more things. That's part of why we declutter stuff. It's like, right. I, I can't even keep track of all of these things. Yeah. Why I don't want to. It's yeah. too much mental energy for a lot of it. And so it's a lot easier to live in such a way where things are simple, straightforward. And not only that, you can use what you have to have more freedom to give and to bless other people who do need things yeah. that, that you've had or need to know how to do things yeah. that you've done. I'm trying to get the house ready to sell and then <clears> if it doesn't if it we don't ever move, I'll like it better here because I made it nicer. So there's some things like the pantry with the birds, I mean that's not for selling, that's for me. And then painting, making sure, you know, doing the upstairs bathroom, that helps if we were to sell it, but also obviously I want that done too. So if we stay or if we go, either way, I'm glad that I have a fire lit under me. Allie from New Hampshire was saying I'm nesting, you know, I'm glad to be doing those things and getting the house nice. So that's it. Yeah, I'm gonna take the room in the basement where we store stuff, clear that out, I'm gonna put stainless steel walls in <laughs> and rubberize the floor and that'll be my room. There you Just the room that never gets dirty. Yeah. It's always your... clean. Would if you... I have to hose it down. Would you put your books in there? <laughs> How do you say room? My books would be laminated. Say Everything's room. Laminated. Room. Oh he says room. 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 Yeah. Bedroom. He's not from here. Right. Dining yeah. room. All right. Living room. They think it's funny how I say room. I don't hear anything. What do you, you room. room instead of like R U M? Yeah. Or S somebody made a that kind of yeah. right. Oh, right. The phonetic sounding. Yes. Yeah. Room. 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 Okay. Room. You're dismissed. I'm sorry. You're dismissed. <laughs> oh man. I know. I've been dismissed through most of my someone also adult asked life. me how what kind of fiction I read. I've been reading lawyer fiction, like, uh, but the language isn't the greatest on those things. I used to read um, Christian fiction, tons and tons of Christian. Yeah, it's Christian actually she's at, a, fiction. she's at an interesting impasse in her life. So I'll just say this: so she used to read a ton. Matter of fact, could probably outread most people reading all kinds of stuff in a very short period of time. So much so that last year we had a project at church where people were reading through the Bible in 90 days and I just said look she she can read and she can read fast and so instead of 90 she read it in 45 days yeah I didn't the think I could do Bible. it in 90 well what happened was and this? so th I'm just going to say this though is that's the you're a very voracious reader speed reader type I, I say speed reading it's not speedy but it's you you can cover a lot of ground I am not like that I'm very slow and and I take a lot of time. I read a little here, read a little there. But in the last, I would say, seven to eight years, you've done very little reading. I have done very little reading. And part of that is, you know, when you've homeschooled for a long time, you've had to do a lot of reading, a lot of mandatory reading. And at some point, you're like, okay, I'm going to find something else to do. Yeah. And a lot of that energy that she used to have with the schooling and a lot of reading is now involved in video creation yeah which is um you know she's been able to do amazing stuff there as well i need to find some christian mystery writers uh so many of the genres that i was reading of christian books it just it gets very repetitive and you get you know how they put a story together so you know what's going to happen so it gets kind of boring so if you have any suggestions so if you're looking for fun and and things that would not be normal um, I like Bollywood movies, um, particularly <laughs> some of the older ones. He does. You don't really need to know. Uh, you don't really need to know Hindi or Pashtun or <laughs> Punjabi. 
you can really enjoy some great movies. They're very funny. Uh, usually, uh, a lot of them have a lot of music, a lot of dancing. We're talking. Uh, there's usually always a wedding in in one of these movies. Great stuff. Um, the other one, obviously, is I, I enjoy a lot of things in Spanish, and reading books in Spanish is a big plus for me as well. It's like, you know, I, I could read similar stories in English, but it's interesting to read the story from another culture as well and to hear the way that's put together. Um, so I have one I'm reading right now called Cornelius, which is a great book about uh, a Roman soldier who is... Um, basically accused of being a traitor. Um, he's able to sneak away and get away, and he's actually falsely accused. His his leader was trying to get rid of him so they could actually become leaders in Rome, but he runs away after his wife and his son are murdered by this person and comes to Jerusalem at the time of Christ's crucifixion. It's quite a book, but it's in Spanish, so... Yeah, but so, I'm saying, you know, there's very interesting reading that can be done if, you, if you've if you gotten into some kind of a rut. There's a lot of places to look for Jeanette, new ideas. Jeanette Cave in Law 2772. This is before Easter. I don't think we ever answered this. She wanted to know, uh, do you plan something new when you become empty nesters? Do you plan on doing something new when you become an empty nester? <laughs> I'm always doing something new in some ways right like I like to play the piano which that's something I I don't do it publicly I just do it for myself and I'm not great at it I like cooking you know I actually was working crocheting some things because Rachel wanted to crochet and you taught her I I you know when it comes to like if we were to run a a, a food stand or something that'd be a great deal uh, getting into motocross is interesting it was interesting this last year I was doing some reading and I was interested in, there's a massive race that happens in Saudi Arabia every year called Dhaka. And um, that's a, you know, off-road race where they take all kinds of different vehicles that people run. It's also very dangerous. People really get hurt. But it's an interest that... You want to be a racer? No, no, oh, no. It's an wanna... interest that I got all kinds of things that right. I want to do. I'm not going to be... Looking for something to do when I'm an empty nest. No, we'd I'm like just, to go to, I like all kinds of things. We'd like to go on some mission trips together. Short term Travel, mission trips. Yeah. We'd like to Travel go to Panama. Missions trips, specifically yeah. Panama. Yes, I have friends there I'd like to visit. We'd love yeah. to go back to Nicaragua at some yeah. point. Friends there to yeah. visit. Yeah. yeah. There's some other, like, you know, you had got me this wonderful Christmas gift a couple years ago to go see a particular uh, musician and because of COVID it got canceled. Not only that and so that was when my knee went <laughs> that same trip. I, so I would I love to gone. go to some of those yeah. things. She well. also asked what are the things that give you the most joy in life? Hmm. There's a question. I hope well, you're I watching can, this Jeanette. Right. I can honestly say for me, and I know this isn't true of, of a lot of people Spending time reading my Bible, I can do for long periods of time because I like it. I yeah. enjoy doing that. Hearing about people studying that it, put their reading faith it. In Jesus. Yes, I love biographies. Those are things that or like I really enjoy. Good at stories, yeah, testimonies. Hearing about how other people became a Christian, right? Seeing your kids make good decisions. Yeah. That's a Joy. Yes. Yeah. Like seeing my grandkids. Life go well. seeing my Grandchildren. Grandkids. That's a joy. Big joy. Um, you know, we've had really good health overall. Yep. That's been a blessing. Um, I think, you know, today I was reading in Ecclesiastes and Solomon says that joy um, God gives to us, God gives to those uh, who are his children. And we find joy in eating and drinking, but God is the one who gives joy. It's a very interesting uh, set of verses that he, because he's, Solomon is writing about how life in itself without God is kind of empty or vain, but he points out that joy is often in very simple things, and it is something that God gives to us. Yeah. So I right. found that really interesting in that set of verses. Um, but I, again, like I said, we, we do a lot of the um, things that we do because we like to, but also because we have to. There are certain things you just got to do. 
we talk about this all the time. There's some mountains you can't go around. You just have to climb. And once you know that, you just buckle down and you head forward. Yeah. I mean, you can't um, avoid all the, the uh, mundane, boring, simple things in life. And often what you find is when you get to the other side of completing that boring or mundane thing is then you find joy. Sure. Because you're behind, it's behind you. It's kind of like telling your kids, hey, why don't we go see a movie? And they're like, no, I don't want to be here. You all get in the car, you get there, they watch a movie, they come out, and they're like, yeah, that was awesome, it was wonderful. And like, literally two hours before that, they were totally against the idea. You know? Yeah. Joy often trails um, the events and the happenings in our life. Yeah. Well, I better get editing. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, so if you want to ask more questions, just put a Q in front of it in the comment section, and that will catch my attention so I'll know it's a question you would like me to answer in a video. <sighs> I didn't do it. Now I need to figure out why I'm so slow. Well, <laughs> I got to do the kitchen, the dining room, although I have to say I want to wash the kitchen floor. So if I can't get to that tomorrow, then I will spot clean it. Anyway, it's the study or the room with the cathedral ceiling. I did the kitchen and the dining room. Of course, other things happened in your day and I needed to take my daughter to an appointment, but that's why I couldn't like keep on a going. So we'll continue tomorrow and now I need to get this folded. So remember, as always, give yourself breaks. Don't get down on yourself when you can't do what you would like to get done. And remember, as always, that I love you and God loves you. And I can't wait to see you tomorrow.